All right, everyone. Well, this is episode two of the Braille Army podcast. Um, we didn't see some amazing <laughs> recommendations for the podcast name, so we'll keep <laughs> waiting. Um, I predicted Udo winning. I'm sorry, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay. You know, there's a lot of pressure that comes with being the number one best, like Nigel Houston, and it's just one contest. Two runs, five tricks, that doesn't define who you are as a skater in your whole life. Hey, so it's e- all good. Even the best gamblers in the world, they lose sometimes. It's all good. Hey, what do you think about his apology post? Like, I don't feel like he needed to say sorry to anybody. Yeah, I was talking about this a little bit, and it's interesting because Aurelian and Nigel both, like, very strongly just say, I'm so sorry, I this isn't what I wanted for you, everyone, my fans, I let you all down. But then Letitia's just like, I had fun at the Olympics, all good. <laughs> I, I thought that was sick. <laughs> Yeah. You know, she didn't make the finals. Everyone thought she's going to win or she's going to podium. And I was like, that's sick. Like, it is just one contest. Like, it's not the end of the world, you know? No, nah, but okay. Personally, Arulian was killing it in the preliminaries. And dude, I was like, hey, he he's taking it. Like, he's getting nines. He's getting eight point, like, in the highs. And then, like, I, didn't, I missed the finals. I was like, I was driving home. And I heard the news and I was like, yes, my boy won. But I didn't know who, like was second or third or anything because like you know just tunnel vision once yeah. you're here and you do not condone driving and watching the olympics well i wasn't i i heard through through the grapevine <laughs> through the grapevine i got a text message and i was like you don't and i was like let's go but what i was gonna say is arulian bro Aurelian? He, it was like emotional i was reading his text and i was like i was feeling it in the heart i was i almost wanted to tear up it was I, in french though I tr- Translate. not click see translation. I think um, <laughs> I think Aurelian was the only one to score really high in the runs, right? I think oh. his, yeah. his runs were the only one that scored really high. But has Aurelian ever won like a big contest before? No. That's what I thought he but had. And this right? was it. Yeah, but see, like this, it that takes pressure because like the qualifiers is its own contest, right? So he won the first contest yeah. against twenty people, but Just then he didn't win else. the one against the eight people. So it happens, you know. What I would like to do is rerun the simulation, run the Olympics again, run it a hundred times, and then see who wins like the most often. You know, does Nigel win the most often? Does Aurelian win a few? Does Yuto win? But you only get one life, and in this one life, <laughs> Yuto took it. Maybe Elon can wind it back. Hey, we're not Elon. <laughs> we're not. We're not deep enough into podcasts to talk about Elon. Yeah, that's that's no, true. No, but uh, <laughs> I I was really feeling it. Like this guy really wanted it, and he was just like going on, and then he's like twenty twenty four. Dude, it's gonna be in his hometown, and I'm just like, dang. He's still, he's he's still Body. young. He's still young. He's you like know, what, 23? So in like three really? years, it's gonna be 2024. 20, so he'll be 26, 27. I think. What does it go? 24, 28, 32. I think 32 is in Australia. Maybe really? that's my time. Let's go. Dude, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Dude. Dang. You're like 40 years older. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. 12 Sir Hands. I just looked at this, the translation, and he was very, very hurt. I know. That's so cool how Instagram has a translation button. I never knew that. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, all of it. Hey, uh, in the end, they still made it to the finals in the Olympics. Like, 25 yeah. stair. They're a country. Like, 25 stair hurts. On that. But Olympics, that hurts too. <laughs> that hurts emotionally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Because, like, he jumped down Lions 25. The one Jaws made. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ali Bulalu. Yeah. The king. First one. With tried spiky Bulala. belt. Spiky belt. I you want to try 25? Hey, he Wear started the belt. trend. He started the trend of like, he's the king. Belt, send it to me. He is the king. I, I, bet, U- I bet Uzi has one. He probably does. I've Uzi seen Uzi with like spikes. Like Where spike is Uzi? Neck, right? spike. No, he, look at the footage again. He's wearing the belt with big spikes on it. He was that, he was that <laughs> confident that he was just going to roll away. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and then Legend. bam. Legend. <laughs> Damn, that's wild. Shout out Ali Bulalu. <laughs> Can we get him in the brow house? Hey, if you've seen this Ollie, come out. <laughs> Do any of you guys think you'll ever try to Ollie at 25, sir? Nope. Me? No. Nah. Never. Come on, Brody. I, I watched me. Tommy try to Ollie at 21, sir, the other day. <laughs> uh, Tony, Jeff DeCesare's friend. Damn. And Jeff DeCesare was going to try it too. El Toro <laughs> plus one. Yeah, I filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he tried three times. Dude, that's crazy. And he's going to go back. I'm not going to lie. I've seen my friend try to ollie a uh, 20 in SF, and he split the board completely and sacked the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible to do. <laughs> 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 
Never forget it. Hey, do you think when they're doing that, they're like, this is fun? Like, I'm out <laughs> he here thought it was going to be fun. No. He was flying and thinking yeah, it was he, fun until he hit the floor. Yep. He was having fun, too, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I could find it. Hey, Mo, I, I seriously, I, I need you to watch them. Like, legit watch them. Because when I was watching them, I was like, yo, Mowgli could go out there and run this. I don't know, Honestly. man. You was, need, yeah. If you worked on, like, three or four consistent tricks and – could land them every single try, like, you could literally do it. I think pressure, I think that's the biggest thing that gets to me. Like, ever, always, at, like, I'll be at a street spot, and if it's empty, I feel confident. If there's people, I start, like, feeling anxiety and, like, yeah. looking around. And then it's just, like, I feel like I'm constantly being watched. Like, yesterday I was, like, at a spot in SF, and it was a pretty busy area near, like, uh, Embarcadero, like, the pier. And there's, like, people just walking, stopping, looking. And and I was just stressing. I was like, dang, so much people are watching. And I'm bailing. And then, the, like, they're taking out their phone. And I don't know, some people, I, I saw two little kids on the side. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this for them. And I, I, that's when I did it. Because, like, these two little kids pulled up on the side of, the, like, of this big three block. And they were like, I was like, I got to do it for the kids. Like, I don't know, like, that, that's the first thing that I thought of, but <laughs> it's pressure, for sure, and, like, the way Yudo described it in his Instagram post, he was, like, uh, like, the amount of pressure any person on the Olympic stage, like, whether it be, like, uh, basketball, that's on there, right, or volleyball, or he's just said respect to anybody in the Olympics, because, like, that pressure is insane, and I could feel it through the screen. You know, yeah. U.S. only gets 35000 for a gold medal. I did just see that this morning, actually. Wait, Wait, who, that? who pays them? I, I have America. no idea. The U.S. government. Yeah, that's a good really? Check. I think. And like. But Glow, I think a lot of the other countries pay nothing. No, nah, a lot of the other <laughs> countries pay big bucks. No. Nah, nah. Iran paid like a mil. I seen a TikTok. I never been getting thirty five thousand dollars checks in the finally. mail, so if I got wait, what's <laughs> the other down countries? Down. What's the There's like paying, seven of them. What's the highest paying one? I think the highest paying one's like a mi- like. Oh, 700,000 or 800k. Okay. I did see one, one country got a million. <laughs> yeah, see? Medal. Really? Oh, yeah, one million. You win a gold sense. medal. The girl from the Philippines that gave her a house in 700k because <laughs> she was in the struggle. You seen that girl? The uh, weightlifter? Yeah, 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 yeah. Their first medal, right? Their first gold medal. She's yeah. a weightlifter. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. And she like went and got medal. water from the gold ocean, medal. and that's how she trained. Dedication. That's insane. Now she got a house. Water from the ocean? What and do you she, mean? What is heavy? She was just bench pressing <laughs> that. Get in it. the ocean? She's like no. th- <laughs> using the water <laughs> as the weight. The water oh. as the weight. You know? <laughs> he said she was in the underwater. Ocean just powerful. <laughs> Everything in the ocean. Is, is lighter underwater. Well, that would be counterproductive. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I knew Can- Canelo Alvarez, a boxer, he, he trains underwater in his pool. I've seen that. Oh, a lot there? of people train underwater. There's more resistance. It's like, like the hyperbolic time chamber. It's like Basketball players be in there too. Aquabolic. I wish I could train underwater. You can. You have a pool. You can. You're right. <laughs> You're the only one with a pool. Yeah, there's zero excuses from you. I You're really can't. I don't know how to stay under the water, though. You, you need a weight belt. belt. Yeah. Weight belt? Yeah. Yeah. Just kill myself. <laughs> 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 Tie your feet to center blocks. <laughs> what the heck? No, you, you just... <laughs> You, you just cut hold on to, like, out. kettlebells or something like that. Make sure yeah. to, to keep cut you at the that bottom. out. I'll go Please. train with you underwater. Let me know. If anyone trying to train underwater, give me some ideas, and I we should, might get under there. We should do underwater <laughs> sparring matches. Oh, Underwater game of skate? I'm down. Yeah. Let's go. That's crazy. You think we get a Have bo- you ever tried? No. Dude, the board floats up, huh? You can't even kick I flip. played skate underwater in the shot cage. I know. Yeah, how was it? Was it tough? We shredded there. From Crook. See? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rails. From Crook with sharks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm trying to do it. That sounds fun. You got the pool, so you got to. Pool's kind of deep, green too. Light. Me and Uzi are supposed to do a YouTube video there at my house in the pool. Stay tuned. TFTI. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear about this. <laughs> Floating Islands. Um, I had a question for JD. JD. Yeah. You enter a lot of contests. Uh, more than anybody I know personally. And I want to know what you thought about the Olympics. It was pretty good. I think there's too much best tricks. I thought it should have been like three runs, three best tricks. I mean, it was good, though. They were well, killing it. To be fair, JD, your discipline yeah. is park. Yeah, and we watch exactly. street. But I agree with you. I think it was kind of weird how it has the runs. Because the run kind of works as like a safety because no matter what happens, you get a score, you know? But like what I was saying before, only Aurelian was the one to get really high in the runs. But it's like he does like hard flip front board in the run, 
and a bunch of other tricks and gets like good score then they just do hard flip front board by itself and then it gets like the same score it's like yeah it's kind of weird yeah, it exactly. doesn't make sense like, that's on them and their management skate flat in the run and then just do all the rail tricks yeah that's why i didn't really like best trick because if you like killed a run you like did the best run ever and then best trick somebody could just take you yeah. out on it mm. and like you still you have to use the four scores as well so even if you do yeah. two perfect runs it doesn't even do anything yeah it doesn't matter you gotta up the run yeah you gotta up but the yeah, best Mo- trick. jd doesn't only end the contest he wins contests non-stop I know. he literally won a contest like a few days ago he sent yeah, me the Sunday. photo <laughs> and i was like what the heck yeah we should have had JD top spot on the podium Olympics. Yeah, and then next week I'm going to a contest, and then the week after that, Tony Hawk's contest Whoa. Dang, at Tony's bird, room. Man. So it's oh. gonna be pretty hectic. Are we seeing a 720 in there? I'll try. You see uh, my 720 on Instagram? I saw story? that. Was yeah. that good? <laughs> yeah, it's <was> good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. On a trampoline. Oh. On a skateboard. <laughs> Ricky, have you been watching any other sports in the Olympics? Definitely not. <laughs> is skateboarding a sport? Chaos? Leave in the comments below. Just because it's in the Olympics and an Olympic sport, I still don't think that that makes skateboarding a sport, to be fair. Have you seen the kayaking in Olympics? What? They literally make like a man-made river with like, it's crazy. You know what I didn't notice straight away on the Olympics? I look at the course and I was like, that's a big course. There's Too so big. many obstacles. But if you cut it like right down the middle, it's like a mirror of the other side. So then it's like the regular people can have the exact same course and the goofy people can have the exact same course. I didn't really realize that straight away. Oh, yeah. I realize that's all right. I now. never realized that. It's interesting because even you see like the wavy bump over that rail and how they ollie over it. Like that's on both sides. The hubbers are on both sides. That long rail is on both sides. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's really street skating yeah. at its finest. It's kind of crazy to build a course like that. I probably would have built it that it's like just fair but not like a mirror image you know because it's kind of like yeah. a little bit wasteful i guess i feel like they have to disassemble that park and bring it to the states i think they're going to demolish it i think i've seen something saying a petition to like leave it but i i doubt that that will happen if i how much I money did it go to, to build it. that probably a lot Olympics but it's interesting money. street league they figured out how to make it real cheap or well, not cheap but like cheap enough that they could do it because they would build concrete park in like a stadium and then just take it down you know yeah isn't that kind of crazy I think it's crazy that Rob Durdick in 2016 called it. Who? Rob Durdick. <laughs> you didn't see his Instagram post? No, he, he invented Street League. Right? No, but he called Yudo winning when? the Olympics on, he? on Instagram. He yeah, posted. yeah, but wow, the second favorite wins. It's He's not in the, the biggest poll ever. Yeah, he called it. He called it. He's like, save this. <laughs> yeah, and the, and in the post is like, save this. The second favorite. <laughs> and the, the message is like, save this, screen, screenshot this and save it. Yeah. He called it. You like Rob Dudick, JD? You ever watch his skating? I watch Fantasy Factory a lot. Yeah, what was your favorite episode? What was that? I like the popcorn one where they had Jagger Eats in there, I think. One of them. Popcorn? Yeah, yeah, yeah like they were playing like a game of popcorn where this, like the seat would just like explode and then you would like, what? not explode, but like you would just it, like, like go flying. Launch and dang, yeah. that sounds kind of sick. Let's yeah. do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you seen those videos of people like sitting on tires and then yeah just it's pretty up much like that almost. that doesn't look that fun yeah. <laughs> it looks funny to watch but imagine just being that dude you just hit the ceiling and like i don't know yeah where. all right Pete, that would suck <laughs> <laughs> so go you didn't see any highlights of your boy yeah oh you did i've seen a few i watched some of it but i was uh i was out i didn't get to watch all of it how were you feeling Watching your It's good. There. I, I talked to him after the contest, and he said, I'm not going to repeat what he said, but he said it was an amazing time. Shout out China. Shout out the Olympics, and shout out everyone. <laughs> Which country? Uh, where was it? <laughs> what was it? Tokyo. Tokyo, Tokyo, whatever. Shout out Tokyo. They did a pl- good, good job over there. But I did talk to my boy. Can't say what he said, though. He was in good spirits, though? He was in great... He was in good spirits. Yeah, he had a fantastic time, yeah. right? He enjoyed the he competition. He was in Tokyo. Once you're in Tokyo, you got to have an amazing time. Tokyo, not China, let's go. If I was in Tokyo, whatever happens, happens, and I would be happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shout out Tokyo. Braille goes to Tokyo 2022. I mean, I, I would wish. love I to go. I love that. Please don't say that. Why? Catch me at all the restaurants, eat all that right? sushi and ramen. Th- th- Shibuya. Would you go to Tokyo, Gabe? Yeah, me too. Yeah, I would. Easy? 
Dude, that's a nine-hour I mean, flight. There would be rough Non-stop. For me, but you would go easy though. In that place would be incredible. I would love to prove go it. To Tokyo. Prove it. Can Let's you go. sit down for nine hours? Or, or you would you fly oh, first class? It's only nine hours. Yeah. Oh no, no, no way. Okay. The flight out some was kind of travel hours. Thing. No, 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 no. It says that, but you got to think about the time difference. Uh, you got to think about the time difference. So yeah. it's, it says that, but it's actually a short flight. I mean, not a short flight, but it's like a nine-hour flight. For me, it was nine. Let's go. I'm going tomorrow. See ya. <laughs> ice tea, no <laughs> ice? I'm joking, I wish. You guys watch this glow, we'll be oh. in Tokyo, Japan. Imagine. All right, Rick. Crazy. I've been waiting to bring it up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The nut shot heard around the world. <laughs> <laughs> My boy, what's his name? I just call him Cairo. Angelo Cairo. He had three names, and I just call him Cairo. On hello. Shout out Peru. He was sick. Look, he sacked it very badly. Gap back lip to bad sack on the side of the other rail but very next run gap back lip land boom then he's like all right i'm feeling good sitting around waiting 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 best tricks coming up all right wait 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 all right you know what i'm gonna do 540 flip lip boom first tee what yep. the heck post sack 540 flip lip first tee yeah. sitting around for 10 minutes if i had sack like that i would i would quit skating he didn't even like <laughs> flinch or anything he just like sacked it gets up he just walked off like nothing was wrong. And then, if anything, it woke him up. And he was just like a new skater after that. Yeah. He killed it and he almost did won. Kill it. I think what's ridiculous is the announcers. Like, he, he almost <laughs> had that, oh, that's going to hurt. Like, yeah. there was yeah. no emotion to anything. Like, and then they're, they're, the tricks they were calling, <laughs> Manny Santago tries very hill board side. They're like, oh, Nolly, heel to yeah, grind. I'm really like, what? And then one of them, when they did like a, I forget what trick, like a 360, they were like, look at that spinny trick or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's <was> interesting. <laughs> That's what's fun about the Olympics is because it's like this worldwide thing. It's like broadcast in all the different countries. So you can watch a different country and then it'll be their local commentators. So like this was the American ones. I'm surprised they didn't have like pro skaters or anything. Should on. Have. Yeah. Missed opportunity. Because in the Australian one, they had like a top Australian skater was helping commentate and stuff. Because I was watching a lot of the Australian one too. I think another one was like they were doing like a tray lip and they're like, oh, hard flip? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, oh, that's yeah. not a hard flip. But. Seriously, you know, it gave me some faith in my, in my commentating skills. I think they should hire you for the next they one. Should, maybe they should. Get, they got to get. It's a real thing. I'm not judging. I'm just talking. I'm judging them. They got to get juice. Yeah, you can judge them. Yo, if I had seen <laughs> that nut shot in real life yeah. and I was watching it and announcing it, my reaction would go down in the history books. Everyone, everyone on TV was like, who just screamed? It's <laughs> funny. Like, <laughs> literally, this guy. literally, yo, I would be in the announcer's box like half a mile away and you'd be able to hear me on the television cameras in the stadium. People, the skaters would hear you though. It's funny, like sports, whenever someone lands something or whatever in basketball makes a good shot or whatever, they always show the replay and even this, land 540 flip, show the replay, but then sack, no replay, you know. I kind of like that. I guess it's like respect for the athlete, but it's like the skate vibes is like, let's see that again. You yeah, know? Like, exactly. Hey, the world replayed that. Someone screenshotted it, Dude, screen recorded it, and replayed it on YouTube, yeah. on <laughs> social media. Uh, Joey Brzezinski posted a hilarious TikTok about it. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. How rare of a sack was that? I feel like I've it only happens. seen one other person sack on a vertical I've seen a really thing. bad one like that one. Really? Time. The guy was skating down a hill. I think he was doing like just like kickflip into the hill and then bombing or whatever. And then like for some reason he like bailed and then he like the hill's like this. And then he, he tries to stop and then there's like a telephone wire or whatever and oh. he hits it so high. You've probably seen it. Cause he Is that the one on the so bank? Hard. I think I've seen a different one where like this guy like, was saying like a like he went straight to hospital like legit. Honestly, I could, I could see when why it's hard to stop because like yesterday I was going down a hill too and I was like I power slid and even then. I ripped my pants because like it was going against the ground and I wasn't stopping after power sliding. So if you're going full speed, you're done though. But sometimes as well, like your feet are just in the position where you can't power slide, you can't jump off. You just need that like time and then you lose the time and then you're in trouble. Did you see the guy with the knee pads and the helmet <laughs> going down the hills? He like knee slid on actual like SF <laughs> hill bomb. Down he put hole. it, he like knee slid down and then he puts his helmet on the ground as he's knee sliding and then like flips over. <laughs> that was crazy. Think, hey, that's that's crazy. Does, like on purpose. I mean, if yeah. the street is vert, why not bring the vert pads? Makes sense to me. Dude, not a good idea. That guy flipped. Honestly, bombing a hill with knee pads, I would actually feel super safe. 
He didn't lean back though. He leaned forward. Because you get speed wobbles, you yeah, just need to slide. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> if you get those gloves with like the uh, the plate yes. on it. Yeah, that would be sick. But I, you know what I think we should do today, Rick? Because I mean, this is the first thing we're filming today is this Lighting. podcast. Tokyo. I think we should do a persistence where you run full speed, flip around, and then just sack the rail. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> Just perfect. recreate that clip. Sounds I think amazing. I think so too. <laughs> Knee grind. So one time there was a session at the Brilver. And then this guy told me, because he was, like, chilling. He was, like, at the end of the session. We're almost done. And he was trying <laughs> this trick where he would go up the verb, jump off the board, and, like, knee slide on the coping. Ooh. And then knee slide back in. Dang. So crazy. It's kind of like boogie boarder vibes. Yeah, but if you, like, <laughs> slip you and you shins. Also, Gabriel, I know that you were just joking right now, but we push, we actually could do that. I just backlit that rail. We build, like, those foam noodles <laughs> built... Build like a rail out of the foam noodles, and then I back leave them power slide into the noodle. Yeah, honestly, I've we could fully like fake the clip and recreate it. Like That's a maybe a good idea. We should I do it for TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like an anime TV show where they like. <laughs> <laughs> you guys gonna see that? The guy that that, that happened to, he's not gonna be hyped. He's gonna Wait, be I re- stoked. I tagged hey, him. You, you think that yeah. TV scene. that clip probably got us caught up? So yeah, high. I literally, yeah. literally, like, he's like, he, I know he's stoked. About he walks that around the city, and they're like, oh, you're that guy that sacked that rail like that, right? And then yeah, he's just he's just popping popping it off in the city. Oh, <laughs> I tagged guy. him, but he didn't see it though. Dang. Dang. Yeah, but I saw this like one show. I forget what it was, but it was like a cartoon show, and then they just put like foam over every like rail to <laughs> to make it like not sackable because somebody sacked it before, <laughs> and then they would just like slide and just like fall forward. It was so funny. Like even if we'll it has see the non-sack it. <laughs> That's the good yeah, thing about I mean, vert, JD. It's hard to sack it. It's hard to sack the rail. Glow, you, <laughs> you ever sacked the rail before? <laughs> yeah. Bad. Give, give us a story. It's the reason why I skate mob grip tape, honestly. Really? Yeah, and I don't skate old <clears> shoes. So if you don't see me, I don't really like to skate. Or, and I don't use shoe glue. And then over the bolt. Shoe glue? <laughs> That's exactly when I started oh, grip over the bolts and mob. Really? Yeah, I don't use shoe glue. I only use mob, and my grip has to go over my bolts. Because when I was, like, 13, I'd always have super messed up, messed up shoes. Have to shoe glue them, like, a lot, a lot. And then I had old board, Jessup. I'll never forget. It was a death wish, and I was at Mayfair. The, the Red Park in San Jose. Oh. That's oh, seven yeah. rail. Mm-hmm. And, uh... I remember uh, there's a little crack in front of it, and I had already broke my wrist off a crack like that. So I was kind of, like, scared of cracks, but I was like, whatever, I could run it. I was trying to, like, run it with my friends. I feebled it first try. I'll never forget it. And I was like, dang, that's hecka easy. (laughs) And then it was like, oh, my God, I can remember it. I just remember my black and white Steffens being messed up, my board being hecka messed up. The whole Skate Mafia team was there, too. <laughs> I met Jimmy <laughs> Cow. I met Jimmy Cow that Dang. day. If y'all know who Jimmy Cow is and, like, Wes Kramer and all them. Mm-hmm. But I remember popping and just my foot sliding straight off the grip tape. Like, I felt like the bolts hit my shoe glue, and that just left the front foot to... Holy sackness, and I was super shorter. I was like JD size. Sack Mayfair 7 rail. J- Dang. Broke him, fell to my chest, and started crying and ran all the way down the street. And I'll never forget, um, dang, Jamie Palmore. If you know who Jamie Palmore is, that's a real legend. Comes up to me and goes, holy smokes, brother, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember just sitting there trying to hold back my tears and tell him, like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. Like, I'm okay. I'll be all right. And then he goes, what's messed up, bro? I seen you do it. And then you just folded it. Like, he said something <laughs> like that. Like, you just got Scorpio. Because I remember just sacking straight to chest. Like, no sack. Boom. Thank God I didn't hit this face. But that was one of the worst times in my entire life. Ever since then, I was like, I'll do whatever it takes to get mob grip tape and not use shoe glue no more. And then I came up with the method. Since I thought my shoes hit the screws of the board and made my foot slide off, I grip over my bolts ever since then. (laughs) 
That was every a single time event for you. I grip over my bolts. I've been doing it for like six to seven years. Explain why you went mob over Jessup. Because Jessup, it's not sticky. You just, you just fly off. You just, <laughs> it's like I don't know. You just. Could have then, been just that your board was so old. It probably was that, but I had dress up on it, so I'll never go back to it. I've never even, <laughs> I've never skated a death wish again. <laughs> you ne- didn't want a death wish. <laughs> no more death wishes. No more of that grip tape. And Gold no more shoe glue. I retired all that after that sack. <laughs> hey, you, you, want, you, want, you want to know the best part of this story, though, now? Is that I just watched Glow set up a board last week, literally a week ago. He sets up a board, the one he's skating right now, brand new grip, super sticky. You know what he does? He sands it down so yeah. much. I felt it. There is no grip on that board. It was board too right grippy. I was, I, I'm going to be real. I wasn't trying to mess up my shoes. When you can put a new board on, you got new shoes. You do a couple kick clips, they're beaters. Yeah. I'm not with that life <laughs> at all. So I had to sand it down. I seen Nigel sand it down for the kick clips. That day I was trying to kick clip, so I was like, dang, about to become beaters today. So I had to sand it down a little. If you guys ever do that, it's a little still, a little. I like old boards. I'm not going to lie. I like them when they're a little broken. So I thought sanding it down would make it feel a little more broken. But... It did. The lucky thing about the rails here at the Braille House is that unless you're Chris McNugget, you can't get sacked. Pretty hey, much. That's very true. Saying, That's hey, why I just no, try land my trick. And back lip it. style. I'm going to show you a yeah, sack. Yeah, let's do it. Let's you set it up right now. I, I bet Gabe sack could sack it. <laughs> uh, you should try it. Can, I sacked the flat ball the other day. <laughs> Remember? I, I have seen Ricky and I think Mowgli sack the flat bar. Yeah. You can sack anything if you believe. I've seen Rick literally sack. The long flat bar. As soon as we got it. Oh, oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> it was one of the most terrible falls I've ever seen, Rick. And I think it was on a crooked ground. You yeah, I think it was board side. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope it wasn't board side, and I hope it was crook. But you probably won't believe me. The man told him himself. It happens. It's okay. It you does happen. Take it in your stride. I've sacked it. I've sacked. One day make, one day sack. So good. I think One. Mo might have the world record for smallest rail ever sacked. Because <laughs> it was in the sand, so when he fell, like his legs sank Lola into the sand the and he sacked. It was like this high off the ground <laughs> and he sacked it. <laughs> it's on his YouTube channel. Go check it out. <laughs> Went to the sand dunes yeah. and I was like, I'll never. S-. Like I wasn't afraid and then I just completely missed. Foot got stuck in the sand and I, I had no choice but to just go forward. Wait, was that your the, you went on your own time, not with yeah, us? Yeah, went on my yeah, own. Was I wish one I of my favorite that. clips I've ever seen. Like, legend, <laughs> just, legend. Sacking rail is fun. One of my favorite tacks is I was filming this stupid video f- with my friends. We're playing basketball and like throwing the basketball while we're skating, like shooting in the hoop. And then I was like, oh, there's this little six rail. I board slide it, holding the ball and pass it. I like landed it, pass to the guy, and he misses the shot. And I was like, all right, I'll do it again. Boom, sack, drop the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. You probably get more views like that, though, huh? Did you ever post you still it? still got the yeah. clip? Yeah, yeah. You want to watch it right now? You want okay. your reaction going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's probably worse to sack a rail with, like, a basketball in your hands, too. Oh, that's well, it, Which ball Watching did you it protect? back, I'm like, damn, it's kind of sketchy. I could have, like, which landed on the protect? ball and, like, landed real weird. <laughs> 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 Mowgli's Which laugh ball do you protect? Is, is God sent. <laughs> Literally, like when you when you go to heaven, I'm pretty sure that the angel sounds that they make is Mowgli's laugh. That's just I like that. That's a good thought. I could be in the worst mood ever and I could hear Mowgli's laugh and it'll instantly like up the vibe. Hundred percent. Oh man. It's a good laugh. You know what I'll, what one of the worst falls of mine was? What? <laughs> a hippie jump. What? Yeah. You clipped or what? I clipped. Oh no! I have the footage of that somewhere too. Yeah, it was a little hippie jump, and I was a little, I was like JD size again, and I was trying to film a street part because I was, de- I was really dedicated back. I'm still dedicated, but I was really dedicated with my friends, and I started off the line with a switch 180 hippie jump, and it just went <laughs> south. Back. You clip the back foot or what? I clipped both feet. <laughs> it was literally like a little fence like that to a ledge. So I was like, oh, I could switch 180 hippie jump and then be regular. And then I could do like a trick. Yeah. So I was like, oh, like that's something different. Oh, maybe yeah, maybe it'll be cool. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. Go to hit the 180. Both feet clip. <laughs> smack my face. <laughs> Boom. Wreck myself. 
bleeding from the chin. <laughs> couldn't get the clip. <laughs> Snapped my board. I was just <laughs> pissed. <laughs> Oh, That's one of my I'd be super pissed Here, Here's another that. fall. Okay, so when I was like four years ago, actually, probably, when I was skating Berkeley Vert, so I only would like this one side to drop in on, right? But it was locked to get up there, so I had to pump up, and I didn't know how to get out of the vert ramp to pump up. And then I, like, slipped, hit my chin on the, on the coping, and, bro, Dang. I had to get, no. It was just like I had to get like not even sti- like butterfly stitches and oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then there was like, it was messed. That does not sound. Fun. All right, ready, go. Yeah, I saw this video. This was so funny. Boom. Dang, that was a solid pass. Let's go. All right, run it back one more. Wait, he made that one. Yeah, maybe he messed up the filming or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. <laughs> he pre- hey, you protected camera, the right? basketball. <laughs> hey, he protected the camera's got to see it. Rick. Go. One of three balls were protected in that clip. Joe went up. Dang, Rick. Boy, that pass was crazy. Skill. Kobe. That filming was perfect. That's what I was wondering. That clip looked great. I think the other guy who's filming. <laughs> <laughs> we got to recreate that today. <laughs> Let's go, Rick. I knew you had it in you. Yeah. And that. Another slam that I never, like, ever since that slam, I never really, like, bumped to bars was at Milpitas. <laughs> I remember oh, that. You guys were there. I was there. Yeah. Oh, I seen I was it. There. That happened my, right okay. in my face. Oh. My friend, okay, yes. here it is. So yes. my friend <laughs> folded on the rail, literally the try before me, and then I didn't even know until I got right next to the rail. Tried to back feeble to 50 or something, or 50 feeble. And then I just like landed on it like this and then kind of just slipped and hit both of my thighs and I could not walk. I remember Dude, that. Dude, back to back, you just both slammed. Yeah, we Those were the two of the gnarliest that. slimes. I remember just being jaw dropped. <laughs> we were all there. We were filming right there in that section. I yeah. was literally down like walking up, up the path and I just see the little other little guy go down, slam and like almost break his ribs. And then JD comes right behind him and just bodies it completely yeah. and just can't even walk and i'm like oh my god like w- w- there's two little guys just on the floor <laughs> bodied like out of their mind bodied i remember the, too because kid, my buddies. kid uh, uh mason he's from like santa cruz and stuff that was so crazy though because after we were done with filming that section we were going to go to the bowl and yeah, film yeah. jd yeah you're going to film me and, and then, then got- i couldn't I think that was the first time I met you, JD, but then we yeah. didn't really talk because yeah. you, like, sacked, and then that was it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you hurt your arm, too, in that? Yeah, I did. yeah, it was so bad. He sacked, hurt his side and arm. Didn't you have, like, a soft cast or, like, something on it? No, that was... No, that was when I fractured my elbow when the day. Okay, this is another story. So at Fremont Bowl, I was trying, I was doing this run for this contest, right? Online contest. Then I did an eggplant in the very deep end, over rotated, landed, hit my left elbow really badly, fractured it, had to get a soft cast. And literally right after I got out of the hospital, Gabe texted me, do you want to be on the team for real? Literally. Yeah, legend. Let's crazy. go. Dang. Good day. That was no. a beautiful day. <laughs> I remember good? that day. I yeah. felt like this is the most important acquisition that we we're going to have in a long time was trying to get you on the team, JD. And the other time I got a cast was so dumb. It was literally the coping was over waxed. Dang. Just front slash, right? Slipped out. Boom. Yeah, but who waxes coping? Probably rollerbladers Dang. or roller skaters. Roller skaters are insane, right, but I don't like that. Hold up, real quick, fellas. We're gonna give Uzi a little introduction to this podcast. Am I in the podcast? Yes, Am you I are. Podcast? You are now. I'm not even in the on the table. How you doing? Uzi? I'm good. Just how, you gotta tell us. Tell us all. How's your grind been going? Give us My day grind? by day summary. Been, what you I've, been doing? I've been grinding. I have barely skated for like five months, so. I've been skating every day for like the past two weeks. Probably learned more in the past two weeks than I learned in a long time. I don't know. Yesterday I did like a thousand feebles. Hey, look, that number on your story was like 500,000. It was like five million something, but <laughs> I was here for like an hour just doing 
Front Feebles. Like. Front Feebles, Front Crooks, Trey Lips. He's been on the grind. And, and what have you learned about yourself? What, what has opened up in the world of skateboarding to you? Do you understand it on a more spiritual level now? <laughs> you must be one with the skateboard. That's what I've learned. You just came while we're talking about sacks, Easy. What's your favorite sacking that you ever did to yourself? <laughs> I'm getting sacked on a rail. You probably ain't sacked. You're like six four. See, yeah, look at this. Anyone See, can sack. I got long legs, brother. You I never sacked in real life? Not on a rail, but I have jumped downstairs and I was just. So you have sacked. I had a I had a moment in the air that I forgot what I was doing. <laughs> Landed <laughs> a front 180 down the stairs on the nose only. The board went. Oh, oh that happened to me it like that. bad. I thought I was going to, that was it. Like I was laying on the ground for like 20 minutes. It was yeah. awful. Yeah, that, that happened to me at, at, where was it? Poods. Oh yeah? We filming. I was doing a front blunt. It wasn't bad though. It was just like a small one. I like tried to commit to it, but my back foot slipped off. And then I just, yeah, did what easy did. But Dang. yeah, and then I never liked that rail ever again because it, you know, what happened on the rail uh, yeah. at Foods. JD bodied on the rail. Because it was square, square rails. No. At yeah. least you didn't sack on it there. Yeah, I just swelled my elbow. What would it hurt more on sacking a square rail or a round rail? <laughs> square. Square? Oh, Ground. yeah, that kid showed us <laughs> that one clip where he literally <laughs> just like jumped and sacked. Remember? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bro. What the? <laughs> Wait, what's the science behind this? Between square, square round. Circle. Square. The, the worst, the worst rail to sack is the skinny square rail. Thicker round rail, it is less bad. <laughs> That's just <laughs> science. What, Mo? What's up? That's just facts. I've never thought about like what, what I, uh, what's the worst <laughs> sack like. And then he said skinny square rail, <laughs> and I thought about like that is horrible. <laughs> but like you know the ones that are almost kind of sharp. Like one like that. In Australia, there's a bunch of spots with rails like that. What about the church rails where it's like square but also has like a round top too? Have you oh, seen those? That's, that's probably the worst rail I to say. Did you have that rail square. growing up? Yeah. You know that little red one? Did you have that red rail growing up? The little round one? Yeah, that's like roundish square. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. My, I hated that rail. I it's like the best of both worlds, though. Definitely not. You get the feeble angles it's, and you get the, like, the, the flat top for 50s and it's stuff It's circle like that. or square. It's both. You ever skated diamond rail, oh, bro? I, I, I hate it. Which one's that? Well, like, it's like a rail where it's like... Oh, like that? Uh, that sounds oh, terrible. Oh, I hate that. It's only fun for 50 50. spots like that. But then when you 50 it, it just feels like it's really skinny because you're only on the top. Like, you only have that much surface area. Yeah, that's not it's kind of weird. You're talking about that Fresh Park rail, right? Yeah, and I remember one? when I first started filming with Aaron, I would bring it in oh. the back of my car to the old parking lot. Really? And I would try tricks on it, yeah. Wait, I did a 50-50 on it one time. They have one of those at Nigel's Park. Yeah, a fresh park? Yeah, yeah, just like the little ring. Wait, I don't understand what you guys mean. It's like, it's, I'm shocked. Okay, so it's, so like, it's like square, square at the top. Yeah. yeah. And then it, it's like an oval. Yeah. Over rail. It's like flat and then it goes like that. Why? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Best of both worlds. What is it called? Can I look it up? It's called fresh, fresh park. park Rail. It's a red little red rail. rail. Yeah. You would bring the rail with Aaron? Yeah. Dang. It's just a little portable thing. Hey, Aaron actually did a ton of tricks on it, from what I remember. Aaron's super good on the flat bar, or just super good in general. I feel like he never skates the flat bar anymore. Yeah, right there in the red one. You know what he could do, like, literally every try, and it blows my mind? Big spin front board, 270. Oh, I have seen him do that, actually. I've literally seen him do it so many times. It's not yeah, and then front sure board kick flip. Big flip front board a few times. Probably. Man, that's uh, a cool trick. You see what I mean? Like a beveled edge on a square rail. <laughs> yeah. I, I really liked it. I, 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 I couldn't fully visualize what they were saying. <laughs> Whatever a beveled edge is. <laughs> 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 I've never heard of that. Really? I know. <laughs> beveled. It's a pretty cool word. Mm -hmm. All right. So before we wrap up, I just want to ask all of you guys, now that you know the results of the street Olympics, men's and women, what do you think? about your favorites for the park skating? Do you think that some of your favorites can now be upset? Do you have any changes in your opinion on who you think is gonna win now? The park? What uh -huh. do you think? Yeah, for the, park, for the park series I didn't see now. The park, sadly. And Uzi, I'm gonna hand you this mic so you can just talk Zion's for the rest of the win. time. <clears throat> Zion got it. <laughs> yeah, I think Zion could do it. Do Heymana is like 
really consistent. Like, he can land everything first try. Hawaii? Yeah, but his, like, trick bag is a little small. But I think he'll do really good. It depends if everyone else falls. If they I fall, think then <laughs> him on him might win. So I'm not sure who's going to win because I haven't really watched the top guys that yeah. much. I don't really know that well. Um, but I think street skating, non-skaters watching it, they're a little bit like, why are they fall all the time? What is they doing always falling? Like, I don't understand. I feel like they get used to watching the gymnastics. They get used to watching the diving. And then they'd be like little stairs and he falls like they don't i feel like they can't even comprehend like how yeah, gnarly, how definitely. technical how insane it is what they're doing but i think in the park whoa big air whoa and then like <laughs> not that many people are gonna bail probably like most people will land their runs maybe one fall each run you know yeah. versus like people just bail 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 so i feel like the general public are gonna be like whoa park is so rad that was so sick it's in the olympics so awesome i feel like it's gonna have a little bit better reception than the street skating who do you think out of all of the USA people is going to win? So we got Corey Gino, or might win. Corey Gino, Zahn Wright, and Himona. Andy Anderson. I said US. I know, JD, <laughs> but I'm going North America. <laughs> you mean Canada? <laughs> is Canada part of North America, America, baby? I still think uh, Andy's going to win. It's way oh, cold up there. I got Zion. Gonna hold it down for all the people. Yeah, Zion or him on I feel like there's a little less a pressure because they've seen the street skaters go and like they for sure talk to them and they got some knowledge out of the street skaters. So I know the park series is about to be intense and they're full padded. So it's like, you know, oh, they have to be no. padded? No, no, they just wear a just helmet. helmet. Yeah. Oh. I think they're allowed to wear pads, but I doubt anyone will. You know, Zion Wright is now on AAA instead of. Another helmet company? Yeah, don't like shout he, him out. <laughs> he made the right move. <laughs> no, no, I mean shout out Triple Eight, not the other company. Yeah, I don't know who the other company was. Um, when it comes down to the park, uh, my knowledge isn't there as much as it was for the street, so I have no opinion. I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you saw Nigel, right? We're like, oh, Nigel's gonna win. Nigel's gonna win. And then he got so nervous, he kind of slipped away. So, like, I would say in the park, maybe Zion, I don't know, he might get a little nervous. He's not, like, he's skating in the park as much as the other guys. I would say that, but Zion just built different. I think he's just gonna <laughs> he's from it. Florida, bro. He's yeah, drinking alligator Florida, water. He's a Florida man. Alligator water. People from Florida are different. <laughs> hey, shout out Florida. Yeah, shout out Florida. You You're going to see me out there one day. Can I say one thing? This is what's so funny about skating being the Olympics because, like, it's so sick, but it's not really, like, a perfect fit, right? Imagine if I just went to the local skate park, stand around a bit, stand around, stand around, stand around, then just try five shots, cab flip front board, <laughs> the biggest rail, almost <laughs> land it, and then just, like, leave. Would anyone be like, dang, that dude blew it. Like, that dude didn't skate good you know they'll be like whoa <laughs> it'd just be so funny you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> hey man shout out Nigel for trying the world's hardest trick and just let let it be known there's no other pro skaters that could probably do that trick down that obstacle within five tries that's true like he's the goat for even trying that when he could have did a million go-to's but he wants to try the world's hardest trick the glory He's going for the yeah, if I'm being honest, I think he could have done switch switch front heel lip, switch front heel tail, would have put him on the top. Yeah, but that's why you yeah, got, that's why you gotta respect. I, that's why I respect Nija. No hate to Udo. Udo's the goat, but Udo's been doing the nolly spins every contest for like five years, four years. As you can see with Nija, he could do kick lip 270 front lip, or he could just do whatever he wants, and he continuously changes it up it's just that pressure i know but he just changes it up i know and he was going but when you the change pen. it up like how he changes it up and don't do the same tricks that you always do there's more of a risk like it's like 50 50 if that like yudo's literally been doing nolly 270 whatever like since he's been put in the game he played yeah. it smart yeah, he, he did he play won. smart shout out him he but i respect Nigel a little bit more 
for going yeah, seven for going for that you route. See, like, <laughs> he could have easily did switch hill front lip like nothing. And he could have. Yeah. yeah. But he's Niger. Come on. Yeah. He wants to be the best. No, not. I see it. It's like, do I want to win the Olympics and play it safe, or do I want to win the Olympics and do a crazy? Imagine if he goal. landed it though. Yeah, That's what I mean. But imagine like how hyped everyone would be and like how much everyone's like, dang, he's the goat, he's the goat. And like he, you know, he almost did land it. He did slide it and like pretty much land on the bottom. I'm pretty sure I'm one of them. That's why I love Nigel so much because he continuously changes it up. You don't know if he's going to do switch heel, front lip, half cap, full cap, back nose blowing down the big curl. You don't know what he's, you really just don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah and mind blowing. It was crazy too because on his like last try, I think it said like he needs like a 9.5 or a 9.6 to take the lead, right? Yeah. So my, I was watching with my, my parents, and my dad was like, so the trick he's doing is like crazy, right? Because my dad knows a little bit about skating. So he was like, he did, uh, when Aurelian did like hard flip lip, my dad was like, yo, that's a hard flip. That's crazy, right? <laughs> but, front huh? Hard flip front ball. Yeah, or, yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, but so, yeah, when Nigel's trying the full cap flip lip, and he's, he needs that point to win. I'm like, Dad, you don't understand. If Nigel lands this trick, he's definitely getting a 9.9. And it's the most historical moment ever to happen in skateboarding if that happens. Like, yeah. you don't understand. Like, that'll be insane. So I do totally understand why he was going for it. Yeah. I disagree with it. If it were me up there, I would have, like, tried it twice, messed up, and then gone for my go-tos after you two. Have three other shots. Actually, because you have yeah. three more shots. I should have looked at it again and see what score he needed to land, to come third or to come second. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, Nigel wants to win. I feel like he wasn't even thinking about the podium. He's only thinking about winning. I, I feel like mm-hmm. he wasn't thinking about the podium at all. But maybe it would have been nice to get on the podium, you know. like it, it, it's He did land one trick. Awesome. Nolly healed back I think, I think yeah. Nigel, if he ain't on the podium first, he'd rather not be on yeah. it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. That's what I think. That's why he went out sending it. I'll see what it Well, yeah, that's what he thought for sure. But I'm wondering if, if I think that it was a mistake or not. Because it's like no. it's easy to just sit I there. I think and the, talk. when you're that high, you have managers and all that, and you have a whole game plan. Like you talk to somebody the whole time. Yeah. All right. We're have we're, someone like yo. We're all skaters. You know, whenever uh, you leave a skate spot, and you didn't get it for your video part, and you just go home and you're like so bummed out, like for the whole day until you go back and after land you it. try five shots. No, but that uh, that's what <laughs> I was gonna say. This is what it's ha- what happened. He only had five shots. And it's that same feeling, but worse, because now he has to wait until the next Olympics if he even goes back to the Olympics. You reckon he did it in the practice? Like, he must have, right? No way. No uh, way. He was really? just going for it. Yeah, he was just going for it. He's Nyjah Houston. That's crazy. He was confident. But it's like he got five shots, got kicked out. Dang. He was confident <laughs> because he was doing full cab lip every time. Full cab yeah, lip every okay. time. Yeah. That's what I was wondering. Is like, did they tray lip the twelve in the practice, or did they just do it on the day? You know, I'm pretty sure really they must have, because that's what's hard to understand. That's what the viewers, the non-skate viewers, don't understand. Because they probably, they literally just think Nigel wakes up, cab flip lip <laughs> land next day, <laughs> cab flip lip land. Like they probably think that honestly. Yeah. And like it, when you look at it there, it's just like yeah, jump down, whatever. They don't realize that like you could badly like break your back, break you your ankle. Die. Like, yeah, you yeah. could you die. You could literally yeah. die trying that trick. Every like pretty much, I think I just slammed pretty good once, but like pretty much everyone got away from like the stairs without really slamming. One of the one of the girls, one of the Japanese girls, slammed super hard. She tried half cab no slide going a little bit slow, kind of locked in right at the top, and literally just fell to flat, like, bad. Dang. Like, people watching are like, oh, yeah, you jump downstairs, and like, if you don't land it, you just land yeah. at the bottom. Like, yeah. No big deal. yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. I was watching swimming in the Olympics, and <laughs> how hyped they are for people to swim back and forth in a pool, yeah, and not no how way. hyped Brother. they are for skateboarding when someone is literally sacrificing their life <laughs> downstairs, everything they got. And they're just like, oh, sick. <laughs> Wrong trick. Hard flip. That was which was the tray flip. And then they're like, oh, he's coming down the lap. He's swimming fast. Like, we need to get that love for skateboarding because exactly. trust me, if you all talk like that, the audience would have been way more intact and way more like, oh my God, this is actually amazing instead of having. Are you talking about the announcers? Yeah, the announcers were just like, yeah. Oh, he did a kick flip. <laughs> Oh, he did a, he need a nolly, or he don't even know what nolly is, but they did a switch heel flip. They made it look like it was golf out there. (laughs) They sounded like it was golf, but if you watch Katie Ledecky, 
she's an Olympian, a gold medalist, like a really high person. When she's swimming, they're like, oh, she's going, she's going, boom, boom, oh my God, can't she take it? That is true, yeah, you guys are right. In the pool, though. It was more like golf and then a race, everyone is kind of like blowing up and like yelling, and then in the skating, they were very calm. Maybe the announcers were just super nervous because they didn't know the trick. Nope, I would hope. They're like this. We need an exclamation. Somebody does an NBA and the announcers are like this. (laughs) We need to get an interview with them. (laughs) She did a... uh, because a trade flip and a hard flip are con- two completely <laughs> different tricks. We can't confuse those ever again, like ever, especially in the Olympian mode. I'm pretty sure Niger heard that and was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. That was it for the Braille Army Podcast 2. Um, any last words from anybody here? Hope you're having an amazing day. I hope this podcast brings light to your day. Don't be afraid to sack the rail. You sack the rail, (laughs) you get back up, you do it again. Yes, sir. And with that being said, we'll see you in the next videos. Toodaloo.